Imagine a hidden book of the Bible, known only to a few and rejected by mainstream Christianity. This mysterious text, the Book of Jubilees, offers a unique perspective on biblical history, creation, and God's laws. Preserved in the Ethiopian Orthodox Bible, it is often called Little Genesis because of its focus on Genesis stories with added layers of detail. Yet despite its richness, the Book of Jubilees was excluded from most Christian Bibles. Why was this ancient text left out? And what does it reveal that was deemed too controversial? In today's exploration, we'll dive into the Book of Jubilees and uncover its unique portrayal of creation, time, and laws. From retelling creation with heavenly insights to laying out a forgotten calendar and additional commandments, this text claims to offer details the mainstream Bible lacks. The Book of Jubilees begins with the familiar story of creation but quickly introduces new concepts. According to this text, God not only created the universe, but also set up time itself as a divine framework. Unlike the lunar calendar, followed by ancient Israel and much of the modern world, the Book of Jubilees insists on a solar calendar. This calendar, allegedly overlooked, consists of exactly 364 days divided into four equal seasons of 91 days each. This precise structure was intended to ensure that holy days like the Sabbath and festivals would always occur on the correct dates. This divine calendar governed by angels would allow humanity to live in alignment with God's order. The calendar in the Book of Jubilees bears a close resemblance to the Ethiopian calendar which includes a similar division of days and seasons and may have ancient roots tied to this sacred time. Following the correct calendar was more than a matter of routine. According to Jubilees, it was an act of obedience. Deviating from this solar calendar led to spiritual disorder, a recurring theme in the book. In this perspective, those who followed the lunar calendar disrupted God's structure of time and even introduced chaos into the universe. For Jubilees, time is more than a measurement. It is a cosmic rhythm that unites humanity with God's divine will. The Book of Jubilees not only tells of God's creation of humanity and the earth, but also describes the role of angels in the governance of the universe. It claims that angels were created on the first day, before any material elements. These angelic beings serve various roles. Some are messengers, while others are responsible for overseeing cosmic cycles, guiding the sun, moon, and stars. This concept of angelic responsibility for time and seasons is a perspective echoed in other ancient texts, but Jubilees uniquely emphasizes it as part of God's system of order. This divine hierarchy is crucial to the book's theme, highlighting how angels interact with humanity to ensure adherence to God's laws. The role of these angels extends to imparting laws and commandments, emphasizing the idea that God's laws existed before human societies. According to Jubilees, angels directly communicated laws to Adam long before Moses received the Ten Commandments. Through angelic instruction, humanity was guided on how to live in obedience and holiness, from laws about purity to marriage and worship. In this way, the angels play an essential role as intermediaries of divine knowledge. While Genesis describes God resting on the seventh day, Jubilees goes further, portraying the Sabbath as a cosmic principle set at creation's very foundation. The Sabbath isn't merely a day of rest, but the cornerstone of time, sanctified as a divine law for both humans and angels. According to Jubilees, the Sabbath and Jubilee cycles every 49 years were instituted as cycles of renewal intended to bring humanity and creation back into harmony with God's order. The book's insistence on the Sabbath highlights its theme of eternal laws. It portrays the Sabbath as a sign of holiness intended for all creation. This perspective reflects how Jubilees doesn't just retell biblical events. It seeks to uncover the deeper cosmic significance behind them. Jubilees extends beyond the Genesis account to describe Adam's life in greater detail. After his creation, Adam is given specific commandments from God, relayed by angels, establishing a covenant with humanity. 
These include observing the Sabbath, maintaining purity, and honoring specific moral codes. The book presents these laws as part of a divine covenant, binding Adam and his descendants to God's will. This early introduction of divine law, long before Moses, is a striking departure from traditional biblical narrative. In Genesis, laws seem to emerge primarily with Moses. Jubilees, however, presents the idea that laws were embedded in human existence from the very beginning. By placing angels as mediators of these laws, Jubilees reinforces the idea of a heavenly order that humanity is meant to follow. The story of Cain and Abel in Genesis is well known, but Jubilees adds new layers, portraying the murder of Abel as a profound violation of God's law. While Cain's line is cast out, the line of Seth, Adam's third son, continues as a righteous lineage, upholding God's commandments. Seth's descendants, according to Jubilees, were taught to observe God's laws as passed down by angels, setting a foundation for a faithful remnant, even after humanity's initial sin. In Jubilees, the flood narrative emphasizes the covenant between God and Noah as a renewal of divine order. This covenant is more than a promise. It's a binding set of laws intended to guide humanity towards purity and righteousness. The book also delves into the causes of the flood, such as the corruption spread by the Nephilim, or the offspring of fallen angels and human women. This added detail casts the flood as a necessary act to cleanse the world of corruption, influenced by rebellious angelic beings. After the flood, Noah receives laws similar to those given to Adam, including instructions on sacrifice, purity, and the Sabbath. Jubilees suggests that Noah's obedience to these divine laws served as a model for humanity to avoid further judgment and remain in harmony with God's will. In a significant departure from Genesis, Jubilees adds an account of Abraham's youth, portraying him as a young man who rejects the idol worship of his family. This story highlights Abraham's early devotion to the one true God who called him to reject pagan practices and align with divine laws. This radical act of smashing his father's idols marks Abraham as a foundational figure in the battle against idolatry, foreshadowing his role as the father of a people devoted to God. While Genesis primarily associates law with Moses, Jubilee suggests that Abraham received divine laws long before Moses. These included observance of the Sabbath and sacrifices, elements later formalized under Mosaic law. In this way, Jubilees implies that God's laws were passed down from generation to generation through angels, establishing a cosmic order that both angels and humans must follow. In Genesis, circumcision is given to Abraham as a sign of the covenant with God. However, Jubilees deepens this by declaring that circumcision was not just a physical mark, but a divine law written on heavenly tablets predating Abraham. This act of obedience, according to Jubilees, aligned Abraham and his descendants with a cosmic law that was intended for all of creation. The Book of Jubilees offers a fascinating glimpse into a worldview where time, law, and creation are all part of a divine structure, maintained through angelic intervention and human obedience. Its emphasis on a unique calendar and early divine laws, however, may have been too unconventional for the early church leading to its exclusion from the biblical canon. Through its unique retelling, Jubilees seeks to align humanity with a divine structure established at creation, providing a radical reimagining of biblical events that challenges us to think beyond the traditional Genesis narrative. In Genesis 22, 1-19, the story of Abraham's binding of Isaac demonstrates Abraham's profound faith and obedience, presenting a defining moment in his relationship with God. God tests Abraham by asking him to sacrifice Isaac, his beloved son. Though it's an excruciating request, Abraham complies, ready to obey until the last moment when God intervenes, providing a ram as a substitute offering. Abraham's faithfulness is rewarded with God's promise of abundant blessings and numerous descendants. The Book of Jubilees, an ancient Jewish text that expands upon Genesis, introduces a deeper spiritual dimension to this story. Jubilees recounts the event as a cosmic trial, with the angel Mestema 
often associated with Satan, suggesting the test, hoping to see Abraham fail. In this version, the test serves not only as a demonstration of Abraham's obedience, but also as part of a cosmic battle between good and evil. Angels intervene to protect Isaac, and the episode underscores that Abraham's unwavering faith triumphs over evil, reinforcing his role as a model of righteousness. Later in Genesis 5.23, God reveals to Rebekah that her twins, Jacob and Esau, will become the forefathers of two nations, with the older Esau serving the younger Jacob. This sets the stage for the complex, often contentious relationship between the brothers. In Jubilees, this struggle is portrayed as part of a divine plan. Jacob is predestined to inherit the covenant, while Esau's descendants are seen as opposing forces to the chosen line. This version emphasizes Jacob's role as the inheritor of God's blessing, while Esau represents rebellion. Jubilees goes beyond Genesis, depicting Esau as the forefather of a nation that will oppose Israel, emphasizing a long-standing spiritual conflict. While Genesis mentions the brothers' rivalry, Jubilees extends this to portray Esau's descendants as adversaries of Israel in an ongoing cosmic battle, highlighting a theme of good versus evil and the destiny of nations. In Genesis 27, Jacob secures Isaac's blessing, ensuring his place as the father of Israel's 12 tribes. Jubilees deepens this, describing Jacob not only as the heir to the blessing, but also as the guardian of divine laws passed down through his lineage. These laws, later codified in the Mosaic Law, include instructions for the Sabbath and other holy observances, which Jacob is tasked to maintain for his descendants, reinforcing his role in preserving God's covenant. Jacob's twelve sons each play specific roles in God's cosmic order. Their births, according to Jubilees, are aligned with a divine calendar, making them integral to the preordained destiny of Israel. This portrayal elevates the tribes from mere descendants to stewards of divine law, each with spiritual responsibilities to uphold God's commandments across generations. Jubilees also elaborates on the sin of Reuben, Jacob's eldest son, whose actions disqualify him from the birthright, Genesis 35, 22. This transgression is framed as a violation of divine law, leading to Judah's ascendance as the tribe leader and Levi's appointment as the priestly tribe, reinforcing the cosmic order. Levi's priesthood, established by heavenly decree, goes beyond tribal duty. It's portrayed as an eternal mandate to connect heaven and earth. While Genesis narrates the story of Joseph's betrayal by his brothers, who sell him into slavery, Jubilees presents this as a transgression recorded on the heavenly tablets, underscoring the sin's cosmic ramifications. The brothers' actions disrupt the divine order, bringing future suffering upon Israel as a consequence. Joseph's rise in Egypt, according to Jubilees, was part of God's plan, leading to the Exodus, a pivotal event preordained in the heavenly realm. In Jubilees, angels are key players, guiding and protecting Joseph, ensuring his destiny is fulfilled. These angelic interventions highlight Joseph's role within a divine plan that transcends individual experiences, portraying his journey as part of God's cosmic design. In the Book of Jubilees, the retelling of the story of Joseph and Israel's journey to Egypt adds rich spiritual layers absent in Genesis. Joseph's journey is portrayed as a divine mission, carefully guided by God and supported by angels rather than simply a story of luck and success. This divine orchestration is not just for the survival of his family during the famine, but is also a prelude to the Israelites' eventual deliverance in the Exodus. Unlike Genesis, where Joseph's story concludes with his family's settlement in Egypt, Jubilees extends it into a prophetic narrative, foreshadowing Israel's future enslavement and liberation. Joseph, according to Jubilees, is aware of the impending bondage of his descendants, and he takes steps to prepare them for their eventual deliverance. Jubilees emphasizes that Joseph's rise to power in Egypt was not a mere act of providence, but a fulfillment of prophecy. It includes the detail that Joseph prophesied his people's eventual liberation, stating that God would visit them and bring them out of Egypt to the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
This reflects a divine assurance embedded within the cosmic order, as indicated by Joseph's reference to the heavenly tablets, which according to Jubilees, contain the divinely preordained plan for Israel's future. Thus, Joseph's death in Jubilees is not an end, but a transition toward a prophetic promise, setting the stage for the Exodus. The Book of Jubilees presents Israel's eventual enslavement as part of a larger cosmic prophecy. In Genesis, Israel's oppression begins when a new pharaoh arises who does not know Joseph. However, Jubilees interprets this period of enslavement as predestined and written in the heavenly tablets, aligning it with God's cosmic design to glorify His name. This framework adds a spiritual dimension to the historical narrative by presenting Israel's suffering as a divine trial that would ultimately reveal God's power through their deliverance. The heavenly tablets affirm that God had foreseen Israel's oppression in Egypt and had woven it into His larger plan, a plan that would culminate in the giving of the Mosaic Law, thus integrating Israel's suffering and the Exodus into a universal divine narrative. Additionally, Jubilees introduces a layer of spiritual warfare into the story. While Genesis depicts God's direct actions to free the Israelites, Jubilees highlights the presence of angelic forces and the figure of Mastema, who represents evil, often associated with Satan. Mastema, along with other evil spirits, is described as actively trying to hinder Israel's deliverance by hardening Pharaoh's heart and intensifying the oppression. This framing shows Israel's suffering not only as a result of Pharaoh's cruelty, but also as a result of a cosmic struggle between good and evil forces. Mastema's interference underscores the spiritual stakes of the Exodus, transforming the plagues into more than just judgments against Egypt. They become key battles in a cosmic conflict where God's power ultimately prevails. The timing and significance of the Exodus are given added weight in Jubilees through the concept of the heavenly tablets. In this text, the Exodus is not simply God's response to Israel's cries for help. It is a long-planned event, precisely timed according to a divine calendar. The tablets reveal that the Exodus would occur on a specific date, the 14th day of the first month, a date that was set aside since the beginning of creation. This predestination imbues the Exodus with a profound spiritual resonance as it aligns Israel's deliverance with the cosmic rhythms of God's creation. Thus, Jubilees positions the Exodus within a framework of eternal divine order, making it an essential event in the cosmic timeline. The plagues, too, carry added significance in Jubilees. In Exodus, they are divine judgments meant to compel Pharaoh to release the Israelites. However, Jubilee suggests that each plague symbolically defeats the gods of Egypt, undermining both the spiritual and political powers that sought to keep Israel enslaved. This framing presents the plagues as part of the cosmic battle between God and the forces of darkness, with each plague acting as a strike against the spiritual rulers of Egypt. In this view, the plagues signify not only God's judgment, but also his supremacy over all false gods and his commitment to liberating his people from both physical and spiritual bondage. Jubilees also deepens the significance of the Mosaic Law by framing it as a timeless divine order rather than a new covenant introduced at Mount Sinai. According to Jubilees, the heavenly tablets contain all of God's laws, established since the creation of the world, and they serve as a guide not just for Israel but for all of creation. This means that Moses was not introducing new laws but was revealing eternal principles that had always been intended for humanity. Thus, the Mosaic Law is presented as part of a cosmic order, connecting Israel's covenant to a universal, divinely ordained system of law that transcends human history. Moreover, Jubilees asserts that the Mosaic Law was observed even before Moses. Unlike the traditional Bible, which does not specify that the patriarchs followed all aspects of the law, Jubilees claims that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob already observed commandments like the Sabbath and dietary laws. This portrayal casts the patriarchs as faithful followers of a divine order that had been passed down through angelic revelation, suggesting that the Mosaic law was not a new code, but a restored one. In Jubilees, the patriarchs' observance of these laws shows that the covenant between God and Israel was pre-existent. 
a fundamental aspect of the divine order that would eventually be fully revealed through Moses. In conclusion, the Book of Jubilees reinterprets the story of Joseph, Israel's time in Egypt and the Exodus, as events within a preordained divine narrative. The angels, heavenly tablets, and the concept of spiritual warfare elevate these historical events into cosmic significance, demonstrating how Israel's story is woven into a universal struggle between good and evil. Joseph's life, Israel's oppression, and the giving of the law are all depicted as parts of a divinely orchestrated plan that was inscribed in the heavenly tablets, which record God's eternal purposes. This framing transforms Israel's history into a spiritual journey aligned with a cosmic calendar, underscoring the belief that Israel's covenant with God is part of an unbreakable, timeless order. The Book of Jubilees offers a unique, cosmic perspective on the Mosaic Law, timekeeping, prophecy, and redemption that differs significantly from traditional biblical accounts like Genesis and Exodus. Central to Jubilees is the belief that the law given to Moses is not just for the Israelites, it's portrayed as a timeless universal code that was known to the righteous even before Moses, starting from Adam onward. This framing positions the law not as a new covenant exclusive to Israel, but as an eternal truth, binding across heaven and earth and aligned with the cosmic order. One unique aspect in Jubilees is the cosmic calendar, especially emphasizing the solar year of 364 days over the lunar calendar. According to the book, this calendar is essential for observing sacred times such as the Sabbath, festivals, and Jubilee years. Deviating from it is said to create spiritual disorder, distancing people from the divine rhythm of the universe. For example, God instructs Moses to write down for Israel the law of the Sabbath and festivals, precisely because they are ordained on the heavenly tablets, marking their observance as fundamental to maintaining spiritual alignment. Jubilees 5.2 The emphasis on timekeeping is not present in the same way in the traditional Bible, where the Sabbath and festivals are described but without this cosmic framing. In Jubilees, however, the correct observance of time is key to maintaining harmony with God's plan. This calendar system is said to affect not only earthly observance but the celestial realm, as angels themselves follow the divine laws observing Sabbaths and festivals as a reflection of the law's universality. In this way, the Mosaic law traditionally directed at Israel is seen in Jubilees as eternal and all-encompassing, affecting both spiritual and physical realms. Further setting Jubilees apart from traditional accounts is its assertion that significant events and laws are inscribed on the heavenly tablets, a divine record created at the dawn of creation. The book suggests that all of Israel's history, from its rebellion and exile to its ultimate redemption, was foreordained and follows a cosmic timeline. Events do not unfold at random, but adhere to a predestined sequence written in heaven. In Jubilees 23, 32, it's explained that Israel's rebellion to their redemption was pre-written, highlighting that their fate was always part of a divine plan that would ultimately lead to their deliverance and renewal. This prophetic structure offers a broader view than Genesis and Exodus, which are typically focused on specific events. In Jubilees, the suffering, exile, and eventual restoration of Israel are all foreseen elements of a universal order, giving a sense of purpose and expectation to Israel's history. The timeline also includes the establishment of a messianic kingdom, in which a chosen ruler, often interpreted as the Messiah, will lead the righteous in a world where divine law is fully honored. This vision is reminiscent of apocalyptic themes seen in the New Testament's book of Revelation, but Jubilees adds emphasis on the law's enduring role in this cosmic order. The involvement of angels also plays a critical role throughout Israel's journey in Jubilees, especially in the end times. According to Jubilees, angels will assist in separating the righteous from the wicked, enforcing divine judgment and ensuring the eternal rule of God's will. During the end times, angels are depicted as instrumental in gathering the faithful and casting the leader of the evil spirits, Mastema, into the abyss, signifying the ultimate defeat of darkness and sin. This theme presents a vision where angels act as agents of divine justice, reflecting a detailed spiritual warfare that underpins earthly events and outcomes. 
Jubilees further develops this spiritual battle by introducing the role of Mastema and his forces, who actively attempt to disrupt Israel's journey and obedience to God. This cosmic conflict adds another layer to Israel's struggles, as their oppression and eventual deliverance are framed within the larger struggle between good and evil. For instance, the book suggests that the forces of darkness sought to prevent Israel's redemption, but God's plan prevailed, demonstrating his ultimate power over evil. One of the more profound contributions of Jubilees to the narrative is its vision of Israel's eventual restoration. Despite periods of rebellion and exile, the book emphasizes that God has preordained a time for Israel's return to its land, which will mark a spiritual renewal aligning with the heavenly tablets. This return is described not as merely a political event, but as a cosmic reconciliation where Israel re-establishes its covenant with God, aligning itself once more with divine order. This renewal is also connected to the appearance of the Messiah and the inauguration of God's kingdom on earth, which Jubilees envisions as a place of peace and justice where the law is upheld universally. The idea of this future kingdom is closely connected to the ultimate judgment where the righteous are separated from the wicked, with the latter cast into a lake of fire. In this final judgment, Mastema and the evil spirits will be fully defeated, marking an end to the cosmic battle and ushering in an era of eternal peace. The Messianic Kingdom symbolizes the completion of God's cosmic plan, a world where divine law is not only obeyed, but is also written on the hearts of the faithful. Integrating the spiritual and physical worlds in a unified divine order. Throughout Jubilees, the law is seen as a bridge between humanity and the divine. Its observance is not limited to Israel or earthly matters alone, but is central to the heavenly realms, underscoring its timelessness and universality. This portrayal of the law as a cosmic guide provides a unique and expansive perspective on biblical history connecting earthly events to a grander, eternal scheme. The book presents Israel's history and future as preordained steps within this divine order, culminating in a restored world where harmony between heaven and earth is finally achieved. In exploring these intricate themes, Jubilees offers readers a way to understand Israel's journey and the law not just as historical or religious matters but is central to an ongoing spiritual reality that governs all creation. Through its visions of prophecy, angelic roles, and cosmic order, Jubilees invites believers to consider the enduring significance of divine law and its role in the ultimate redemption of creation.